the Cox 049 Black Widow running a rev up 8x5 prop. This is the Mike Granary Design MG2, scaled down for half a Texaco. The contest winning performance of this plane is largely due to great penetration and extremely light wing loading. The original MG2 was a 108 inch wingspan model. This design performs so well, it's been scaled to many different sizes and scaled down to the half a Texaco event. Here are the rules for the half a Texaco event off of the Society of Antique Modelers website. Of note is the minimum weight, eight ounces per square foot for this MG2. Minimum weight has to be 17 ounces. 049 Cox reed valve engine with a 5.1 cc fuel tank and a maximum propeller diameter, eight inches. I have the Black Widow, it's acceptable. How the contest works, maybe hand launched or rise off the ground. And then the score is the best two of three flights with a 15 minute max. So I was a member of the uh, Sam 66 chapter and I flew in a contest at a state park in New Jersey and I actually flew and competed against the man that designed this airplane, Mike Granary. Here is a photo I have of Mike. June 10th, 1993. Got his orange um, MG2, half a Texaco model. Here's a couple more photos I ran across in that same album. This is at a different contest, free flight contest. <laughs> this old boy here is having too much fun. This picture to me captures the essence of free flight. And here's a picture of my friend and mentor, Bill Brenchley. In his words, he loved ugly airplanes. I believe that's a little Cox 010 in there, in that free flight model. So I was doing some research on the internet the other day and I was really bothered by how little bit of information I could find on this man. I'm very doubtful that he's still around. Look at the age the man was in 1993. I feel very fortunate to have flown against him. So I thought I'd put this video together about his airplane and share a little bit of my model of his airplane. I ran it the other day. Um, motor started up, runs great. We've had some awful windy weather recently, but I certainly plan to get out and fly it. Here is something Bill Brenchley did, and I kind of followed suit. He had these binders of model airplane information. Mind you, this was before the internet, so he would cut out, just like I have marked here, plans, information, notes, catalogs, articles, Save them in binders. Here's another one I have. I'm pretty sure Bill had more than a half a dozen of them. This is my second binder 
That's why it's marked more airplane stuff, but got all kinds of information in here. Saved it because we couldn't just look it up on the internet. Got these tabs marked here. Got scale documentation in here of the full size cub to make a better scale model when I built that cub. I have aerobatic articles, good stuff. Some more how to articles here, um, thermals and how to fly them. So just a bunch of information that I wanted to save. I'll show you something in that other binder though. I have tabs in this binder also. The ORC Club. Check this out. Monthly newsletter called The Glitch Busters. Sent snail mail. <laughs> You just don't see that anymore today. Here's Society of Antique Modelers. A newsletter called Wing Beat. Kind of glad I saved these. One, because you just won't find this anymore today. Everything's online. And there's pictures here of people I've flown with at different events. Here is what I was referring to is this tab here under construction articles I have this copy of the construction article from a magazine that's no longer in circulation called fly models and this is of this article is of the MG2 the half a size in particular um, pretty sure these are pictures of Mike's MG2 and so I went looking on eBay. I wanted to buy this um, June 1985 Fly Models magazine, and I could not find it. Found a bunch of other ones, but couldn't locate this one. This is not in color, as you saw in that photograph I showed you earlier. Mike's MG2 is orange, and I'm pretty sure that's why I made mine orange. But... So this is a short article, this information here, and this information here, that's it as far as the article, and then a one-page picture of the plans. I got the full-size plan from Carson's Flying Plans, which was, I believe, the parent company of that published Fly Models. They also had a plan um, service, but... The only information I found on the internet of Mike Granary was actually quoting this article. That information right there. So, Fly Models published this, documented it. Here is Mike Granary's classic MG2. Um, first flew in 1936. Different sizes it's been scaled to, and then this article of it being scaled down for the half a Texco. So these some of these notes got some information from as far as the construction and um, tuning the engine. And then there's a few notes on flying the MG2. But I just found it kind of disturbing. I thought you could find anything on the internet and there was little to nothing on the internet on Mike Granary. I remember thinking when I built that model in 93 that it was crazy I'm building an airplane that was designed in 1936 and now that plane is 28 years old. I do have some flying models magazines saved. These are flying model magazines that beautiful Bess was in. Here she is in the bones. I just sent pictures to Larry Cruz. He published it. There she is after I covered her. And in June 2000, 
the last time Larry published a picture of the beautiful Bess with some more information on the features of the airplane. I got Fly Models magazines with the Bluefin P30 article, the George Gyro. Here's one. Electric Learjet. Gonna build it someday. <laughs> So this is all being lost. Getting some plans, some balsa wood, building and flying model airplanes. And these guys as boys were designing and scratch building and competing with model airplanes. It's too bad. I got something else to show you. One of the skills to learn is to build light, actually straight, strong, and light. Zero that out with a box on it. I was looking at this earlier today. I have an illegal half a Texaco model airplane. It's too light. It's only 15.8 ounces. Needs to be 17 ounces minimum. And I remember telling Bill Brenchley that on our way to the first contest I flew this plane in. And he said, don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. And good for you. You build it light. But I have an idea. I want to put this in there. See how high it goes. And that would put it at 17.1 ounces. Kind of curious to see how high this will go because at that first contest, I almost lost this thing straight up out of sight in clear blue skies. Called a boomer thermal. So we'll fly it with this in there and see how it does. Here's some more stuff. This is the kind of stuff that I love about modeling. There's secrets in this container. I had one of these before and I broke it. So I built this case for it. The secret is keeping the fuel clean. I've never had one of these little motors not get a full run. And I discovered the secret is keeping the fuel clean. It cannot be too clean. So the way you break these is if you don't clamp this, this will just slide right out. Fall right out and break. So when that's clamped, it can't come out. But put this extension on here. Then I put this reducer on here. It's a little tiny nipple to fill that motor. And then I extract the fuel from my jug, put the nipple on and just psh, open this up, give her some fuel, keep the fuel clean.
Something to point out is this is not a 5.1 cc tank. I'm going to put five in there. Have it right on 15. There's five. And we'll see what kind of flight time I get and what kind of altitude. Fashion range check. Looks like we have a south wind this morning. The radio is on. Um, transmitter and the airplane. I am setting the GNSS performance analyzer to flying. Start it. I have 12 satellites. So I have five CCs in here. And at this point, I need to prime it. I have my glow plug lit, adjusted. I take the extension off it's handier for priming bring this right here give her a little shot clip that off radio on okay we should be ready to go Shot of prime. <laughs> Hasn't picked that fuel up yet from the tank. So with this large prop, the tuning is somewhere between leaning it to where it's strong 
and where it's blubbering rich. And it's about a half a turn range in there. I got it closer toward the lean running stronger. So if you turned it to where it was running the strongest and then backed it up to where it was blubbering, I came back to about two thirds of the way back towards, maybe even three quarter, quarter of the way back towards where it was running strong. And it just won't scream crazy RPMs with that bigger prop. It's propped up to knock the RPMs down and get a longer run time. And as you can see, it's got plenty of power to climb. You just work your way up. And if I was climbing on thermal, it's like I'm about ready to run out. I could be twice as high as this finishing up. So we're going to find out how high this is in not really good air. Sometimes you get a burst at the end. RPM goes up as it leans out. There we are. And now I am gliding. I am pointing it up wind. Do I lose it down wind? I'm gonna play with my trim a little bit. So I get veering off to the right. I'm just about back to center now. Got wind to deal with, a little bit of wind, but now I can play with my glide. I don't want it stalling. I want it penetrating. Let's go sideways to myself here and see what this looks like. Pretty good. I'm gonna have to trade off this altitude. Come over here. I'm gonna watch the glide out in front of me with the fuselage sideways to me. Pretty nice flat glide. Gotta think about when I'm gonna be turning for home. I'm gonna come by one more time, hold some elevator on this turn, get behind these trees, check this glide out. And I better head home. Coming straight for the end of the field. Looks like we're gonna make it. All right, no ground loop that time. <laughs> yes! That is so fun. Get a nice sunny, calm day where you got some boomer thermals. That baby would be a speck in the sky. And let's check this right here, right now. Got Bluetooth, stop, read. Okay. We got 659 feet, and at one point we hit 36 miles an hour. Wow. There you go. Keep them flying. Mike Granary's MG2.